it is wonderful to welcome you once again to our weekly mass with Father Tom and Doug and uh, celebrate with us together for this Sunday, March 6th, 2022, which is the first Sunday of Lent. So today we offering mass up for Nelson Chalifet, a wonderful man, a visionary, and a very hardworking man. He was shot and killed 10 years ago. He served as the general director of Ensugede. He was shot and killed on his way down to Cité Soleil to visit our high school. Yesterday marked the 10th anniversary of his death. So today we remember him and offering mass for his soul and pray God to offer him a special place in heaven next week. Thank you. Thanks, Ev. that was nice. And as Evans just said, uh, Nelson was really the one who was running everything. Nelson was a son to me in so many ways. Uh, and he would be killed as he was entering the high school when the high school was being attacked along with the, uh, actually the principal of that school as well. So we remember Nelson today and we offer mass up for him. We also remember today Mary, who is the uh, mother of Brandewine, and uh, wife of Mike DeWine, and a very wonderful woman. We'll have her funeral, have her funeral mass next week. And so it's just nice to be here. Everybody's kind of coming in late. We have a big choir. Can you see everybody? Uh, and I love this. Look, look at this. Got this guy. Dressed up. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, we had a little trouble yesterday. Sadly, one of the young women, her parents wanted her not to live in City Slate because it was so dangerous. And she, they sent her out for a few weeks. And she only came back yesterday. Because it was his father's birthday, and yeah. she was bringing the cake, and here she was shot and killed. So we have that to deal with today as well. So but we begin this mass, and every time we have a mass, my good friends, we have to place ourselves in the presence of God, and that we have to be willing to be participants and not spectators. And so wherever you may be, you may be sitting alone or with your family, and it doesn't matter whether you're zoom or whatever we're doing uh facebook or i don't know all the things mysteriously i really believe our lord god is reaching out to each and every one of us and he's saying i love you and i want to break bread with you it's a universal sign of acceptance so if we can people think of people in our own lives people that we maybe have a difficult breaking bread with Let's ask God for the grace to forgive and allow ourselves to be forgiven. In that spirit, then, we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of you. We place ourselves now in the presence of God, mindful of the great love he has for each and every one of us, a love that is infinite and absolute. We join now in solidarity with people all over the world especially the people in Ukraine. We give thanks, but we also ask God's forgiveness. Lord, you're the source of all beauty. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You're the source of that special relationship that each and every one of us has with you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're the source of the faith that we have and the mission that we have. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in all of us here. Forgive us our sins and bring us to a life that will never end. Maybe we can ask the choir to chante to class if you like. <laughs>
important. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we're celebrating Mass with John Lafet Nelson. And he has his brother here. And uh, John, and Nelson started a radio station. It's quite large now. And his brother actually runs it with his other brother. Anyway. It's so good to have you all here. All in the back here, and if you get their pictures, they're the staff in the radio states. Let's see how few people they need. Okay. Sweet. Hey, John could, I don't know, maybe I was thinking of John, but maybe we better thank David. First, first reading. So, the first reading from the Old Testament, we've asked David to do that reading. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the blanket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Araman who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing harder labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm with terrifying power and signs and wonders and bring us into the country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. God. to do the second reading from the New Testament. Oh, yes, it's the last of them. <laughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does the scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach for if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. 
and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. But the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and reaching all who call upon him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. <laughs> friends, part of our tradition is that whenever the gospel is proclaimed as it is about to be done now, we believe that our Lord God is speaking to us, speaking to you and to me. We also believe that we're not necessarily obliged to interpret that scripture, but we let it interpret us, let it touch us. Just as we look at the sun, trying to figure out the sun, we let the rays of the sun touch us. And so I've asked my good friend Johnny to do this reading. The Lord be with you. Gospel, Luke 4, verse 1 to 13. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from Jordan. It was laid by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and then they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this turn to be bread, to become bread. Jesus answered him, it is writing, one does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give into whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me, Jesus said to him and replied, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the power bed of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is writing. He will come in his angel, concerning you to guard you, and with the ends that will support you, let your dash your foot against a stone. So I said to him and replied, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. That is the word of the Lord. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Good job there. Thank you. Well, anyway, it's 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 just nice to be here, and nice to be able to celebrate Eucharist with you. Nice to have all our wonderful young people here. We say Shante Bien, this young you, and also to have the, the group from the radio station. And right behind you, before I speak, could we just have Felix look at Felix? Now Felix won a potato sack race yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was really proud. I didn't think anyway there was a potato sack race. We were having a celebration uh, in some ways to remember Nelson. Uh, and we had a, a soccer game and we had a potato sack race. And uh, anyway, Felix, I'm proud of you. I really am. It just was way above it. But all the others were like three or four year old. So I guess that's why you want. <laughs> 
Anyway, today's gospel is a very beautiful gospel, and it's a gospel that can easily touch us. And the gospel is challenging us to understand God's relationship to us. We're living in a time, tragically, when our Lord God is a very presence doesn't seem to be that important to us. It's not that people deny the existence of God. It's just that God is not that important in their life. And it's a time when people are moving further and further away from God, sadly. De Chardin, a Jesuit philosopher, would say, and I've shared with you a few times, that he would spend a lifetime trying to understand why people did not believe in God. And he came to the realization that they just were not taught properly. And in a sense, there's some truth to that. I think even all of us, we, we some, sometimes have been taught, maybe not directly, but somehow God is way up there in the sky someplace and we're down here. And very rarely was there any emphasis on realizing our loving God is right next to us. There was very little emphasis on our loving God being a being, being a person, a person communicating to us, a person who feels for us, loves us, understands us, wants the very best for us. There was very little emphasis on our Lord God being a person, person to person. And in some ways, and maybe not again direct, it was almost as if God was some sort of uh, philosophical principle or a moral principle or a moral imperative, or maybe God was just some church or religion. And, it, and again, we weren't really educated to, to realize that our Lord God is a, is a being, a loving being that infinitely loves us, a person that loves us. God is continually present to us, but sadly, we are not present to God. The whole, our whole kind of sense of God's presence in our life, tragically, is very weak in our culture. It's not that, again, it's not that we deny the existence of God. Matter of fact, we participate culturally. We probably go every Sunday to a church and maybe have baptisms and everything else. But it's not 24-7. It's not. In fact, there was a spiritual writer at once that wrote, he said, God is present to us, but we're not that present to God, except maybe in the church we're more present. But the spiritual writer went on to say, you know, the same God is just as present in a bar room than he is in the church. And I hope you understand that because that's exactly what I'm trying to get across today is our Lord God is everywhere. He's with us. And he's with us every minute, every hour, every day of our life. And so right now we're being invited to enter the desert. So the desert, our culture out there tells us we should be ashamed of the desert. We should be embarrassed by the desert. We, we should always know what we're doing. And the desert I'm talking about is a state of being that somehow we don't know what to do. We feel overwhelmed. Everything seems the same. We don't seem to have any direction. We don't seem to have any human support. Well, every bookstore that I've ever entered, 90% of the books are on how to survive the desert, how to be self-sufficient and independent. One of my dearest friends, married to a young fellow who was one of the co-founders of Hands Together, we all know him and loved him, was, was Rick Thorpe. When Rick Thorpe was killed in the World Trade Center, his young wife called me if, almost like a week or so later. She said, Father Tom, she said, I just came from a meeting of all the widows. They all seem to know what they're going to do. They all seem to know what, how they're going to handle all this. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do. And I said, you know, Linda, maybe you're further advanced than you think. Because it's at that moment when we're in our own personal desert, we say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I have no one else except you. Lord God, 
help me, please. And so what happens is that we suddenly begin to realize the desert is fertile. The desert has beauty, beauty that we've never seen before in our life. But in order to enter the desert, and in order to appreciate the desert, we have to be contemplative. We have to learn how to contemplate. And tragically, we don't understand how to do that. But in the last year, and we're trying to do it again this Lent, we still encourage each and every one of you to take at least five minutes a day to contemplate. And contemplate means finding a quiet place still by yourself and just put yourself in God's presence. Say, Lord, here I am. I'm here. I want to listen to you. This is contemplation. Contemplation is not meditation. Con meditation is much more structured. Meditation is taking a point and, 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 and reflecting on it and coming up with resolutions and that type of thing. Contemplation is called just being able to see again clearly, to be able to live fully. Uh, cont contemplation means opening up a new day, a new way of seeing things. And we can only do that if we make that decision. The problem is, my good friends, for us to have a deep relationship with our loving God, for us to be able to experience the desert through contemplation, we have to be aware that there are three very powerful forces that are uh, kind of undermining any type of con con contemplation powerful forces that are blocking any ton of contemplation. The first force is a preoccupation with ourself, an inordinate preoccupation, a narcissism, that we're, all we're doing is we're thinking about ourselves all the time. Me, me, self-absorption. If it's not that, it's what we call pragmatism. We're always worried about our work, what we got to do, make these phone calls, make this, do this, uh, get the car fixed, get the kids here, go this, do all these things. A lot of activity. We have to, we're always focused on that. But what happens is that prevents us from being contemplative. And thirdly, if it's not that, it's, it's what we would call restlessness, an inordinate restlessness, where we need always to have to have pleasure. We always have to have some sort of stimuli. We can't just oh my God, sit home on Friday night and not do anything. That would be a, would be a loser. But we're always thinking of sky dump, jumping or whatever we're doing, all sorts of things. Maybe not so much like that, but just the idea that we always need stimulation. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. That's what we call restlessness. If we can coup a core, if we can cut short, if we can cut short the narcissism and the self-absorption, if we could decide to for five minutes to not even worry about all the things we have to do. If we can just simply say, listen, I'm not making any dreams or visions of what things could be. I just want to accept reality as it is. Lord God, I want to be in your presence. I want to hear your voice. And my good friends, if we do that, if we say, if we can cut all the self-absorption and all the the pragmatism and all the things that work. Wow. Oh. What happened to her? It is all that just get up. It didn't live in. A visão se dá lá. Mexe das coisas. Mexe das coisas.
Yeah. Well, welcome to Haiti. We always have something happening, but I think she'll be okay. Sometimes we that happens a lot. Sometimes they haven't eaten. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, okay. She just fell. But it's okay. She's okay. Well, anyway, it's. I was just been told she's going to be okay. She just kind of fainted. Sometimes it's they haven't eaten, and sometimes there's other reasons how they faint. But a lot of times that happens with our young students. Yeah. Anyway, I just just want to say to us that we are invited to go into the desert. If we go in the desert and we we cut all the need to be self-absorbed or worried about all, our, or all the things we have to do or all the pleasures we might want or dreams we may have, just say, Lord God, I need you. When we hear his voice. And not only more than that, we're going to start to begin to see beauty. Francis de Sales says the best way to prayer to pray is to experience beauty. My good friend Jim and Joe Leonard's out there. You got your tiny little apartment, but you got that beautiful little window. It looks out on the Pacific Ocean there. Every day I know when you see the sun come up, you find yourself praying. Well, I believe if we can make that decision to cut all our self-absorption if possible for five minutes, all our other concerns about our job, all the other things, and just put everything in God's hands and his presence, we'll begin to see indeed that the desert is fertile. And we'll begin to see, recognize beauty. And where we'll recognize it most, perhaps is in the people most proximate to us. We may even see the beauty in that person we call our husband, the beauty and goodness in him that we never ever saw before. Or maybe the goodness and beauty in our wife or our children or our friends. And this goes for everyone. And even those people that sometimes we feel are just difficult to accept. Maybe if we go through this contemplation, we begin to see goodness and beauty in that. And so it's like sitting at a chair, on you know, a chair and a person in front of you. And that person is loves us and cares for us and we don't even know the person's there but thinking about our toothache and our heartache and all these other things and all the things about self if not then we're thinking about all the things we have to do or we're thinking about all our vision and dreams and we don't realize the person sitting right there loves us and cares for us that's exactly our relationship with our loving god our loving god is a person that loves us during this time of Lent, please, I beg you, take five and even more minutes. To just be still by yourself and say, Lord, I want to enter that desert. And I want to be able to contemplate your presence. I think all sorts of great little miracles can happen. So God bless you and God love you. And please pray for our friend. Hopefully she, she's going to be okay. My good friends. Our Lord God told us to come to him when we are in need. Let us now present to him our needs. We pray especially for Mary. Mary, the mother of Fran the wine. Pray for her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we, for him. we pray for Nelson John Lafette. We pray for God that will give him eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we for him. Is there any special intentions? David. Yes. For the Ukrainian conflict to end. For Allison Beers, Linda and David Clifford, the health of Rich Dragged, the Shaw family, Soul of Mary Shrewing, Joe, Tom, and Ben, Ched, Lafieri, Kate, Beth, Fred, and Miss Shannon, also the Leonards, Madden, England, and Lau families, the soul of Kira and her family, Bill and his ongoing battle with Bill Melamenium, um, healing for Josh and his parents, 
Joe Weber and Millie Hartford, Kathleen O'Brien, Samantha Caprino, and Michael Palafico, Bill Pettinude. Lord God, we ask you to hear these prayers and the prayers and cries of all people throughout the world. We ask this in union with your Father and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice from our hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Lord God, as we offer these simple gifts of bread and wine to you, we offer to you our prayer that we will have the grace and the courage to enter our own desert. We will have the grace and the courage to cut all our concerns about self all our concerns about all what we have to do, all our pleasures and all our dreams, and focus just on your presence. And be able to say to you, Lord, here I am. We ask you for the grace to be able to do that. We ask this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We love them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the word for whom you made the universe, the savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. And this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join now with the angels and saints of old as we sing together. Santos Domino, Deus Sada, Descendiese, Eterna é tu João. Santos Domino, Deus Sada, Descendiese. gifts we bring by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries on the night he was betrayed he gathered his friends about him he looked at them that night and he loved them and he took bread blessed it and broke it 
gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way he took a cup that night, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you father this life-giving bread this saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you may all of us who share in this body and blood of christ be brought together in unity by the holy spirit lord remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and benedict our holy father emeritus bishop messi to our archbishop and all the priests and bishops throughout the world. Remember all the people living in the Ukraine, people living in Russia. Remember the family and friends of Nelson. Remember the family and friends of Fran DeWine. Remember all our wonderful young people especially our one young student who, who became ill. Remember those who have died and have left us, our family members and friends, all the people who have died violently and tragically in this world. Remember especially Mary, the mother of Fran DeWine, John Nelson Lafette, Alexander, who died with Nelson. Bring them and all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with St. Francis de Sales and St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. My good friends, indeed, each of us has our own unique personal relationship with our loving God. He loves each of us absolutely, infinitely, and he knows each of us better than we know ourselves. He taught us a prayer, and today we're going to pray that prayer, and we're going to try to imitate him by including all people in that prayer, all people who live in this world people with different ideologies and backgrounds and religions and creeds and persuasions and nationalities, people we tragically call our enemy. Today we pray together and affirm that bond of love that binds us all together. So Anush Priye in Creole, Notre Pair. <laughs> Remember us, we beg you, Lord, from every evil, and your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxieties, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
kingdom and the power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but upon our faith and our goodwill, and the love that's in all of us, and lead each of us to that kingdom someday where we will live forever. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Yes, sir. Peace will come at that moment and only that moment. We let go of all our need to turn into ourselves. We let go of all the need to do and accomplish all our tasks. We let go of the need to have every experience. Instead, we just look at the person most proximate to us and we experience our God. As I often say that wonderful quote, the most sacred space next to the tabernacle is the person closest to us. So let us demonstrate our willingness to affirm that now. God is not so much way up there in the clouds. He's the person closest to us. So let us share our peace and friendship with one another. <laughs> you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace jesus our best friend and our constant companion the source of the grace that we need to experience our own desert behold now the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world and happy and privileged we are to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be here. <laughs> Oh, man. 
good news is start. I'll tell you. She's a good often. Once I have, but she, she's feeling better. My good friends, um, I just encourage you, please, to consider taking five minutes, if not more, every day by yourself and contemplate. And contemplate means allowing us to open up our eyes and see clearly. And I pray that, that you'll be able to do this maybe every day of your life, but let's do it at least during this length of time. And if you'd like to join us on our journey, please. Just send your name and contact David so we can all be together on this trip. So let's end now with a prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this mass today. We thank you for your presence in our life. We thank you that you are a personal friend to us, that you love us greatly. Help us, Lord, to make you more a part of our life. Help us to reach out to you especially when we're in our desert experiences. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. And right now we have a few more minutes. I, I, poor Dave or Douglas got caught in his, uh, I don't know if his internet's working or not. Is Douglas with us at all? It's not okay. No, he's David, not. Okay, what... We've had a heavy rains all this week, and so that bridge is really coming in handy now. But as maybe you get, maybe you can come over here too, tell them a little bit about our bridge. They know some of it, but this week we had a dedication. So, do, David, do you have any footage, any clips from? Yeah, I can. I can bring up some photos. Yeah, I think a last week was the dedication of the, the bridge we officially officially a uh, opened up the bridge for everybody for the people living in this lake especially in this area so we can see the face the face of the people they kind of really thankful and appreciative for, for for this bridge because it's a very huge step forward and and bringing back dignity to the people because they don't have to walk through this filthy mud again. They have a decent bridge to across and go to, to school, to hospital, to their activities. So I think it's it's a good thing. We continue continually to support the people and work hands by hands with them. Thanks, Evans. Also, before uh, David shows that, uh, Evans and I, and group of us all got together we've been we have a plan we have a dream to i don't know put thousands of trees in sea slave but in this one area we just planted 50 this week and uh the people now want fruit trees so maybe we could do that too yes but our dream is to have trees all over so anyway it's working yeah but dave maybe you wanted to show a little clip of the the bridge yeah i'll show some of the some of the video we showed last week for people who miss it, it's, it's about two minutes. I don't know. We showed it last week. Didn't we? The week before. The week before. The week before.
okay, well, we're, we're, we wanted to plan this week, but we weren't able to, is to really actually show the, the dedication of all the students and all, but it was really quite a, and, and Douglas gave a nice little talk. So anyway, uh, all I want to say, kind of following up on what I preached a little bit about today is that if we can let go and allow ourselves to accept the inevitability of the desert in our life, if we let go of our self, self and our, what we have to do and all the other things, we will really begin to experience that the desert is indeed fertile. And we'll be able to begin to recognize beauty in our life. And one of the great tragedies, I mentioned this to Evans a little earlier, is that Haiti, when people come here, they focus on what is ugly. And that's really sad because this country is a beautiful country. The children and the people are beautiful people. And there's so much here to see, so much beauty to see. Sometimes we get caught up with uh, what we appears to be ugly for whatever reasons, but there's beauty all around us. And my good friends, begin with your own home, your own family. See the beauty in your family and your community and it'll extend to this whole world. So I hope you have a, a good day and a good week and hope we'll be able to get together next week. So God bless you and, and God love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.